Okay guys, so as a follow-up to the video I did yesterday uh, on the unboxing and testing of the diesel heater, which you can watch by clicking here, um, I'm now going to show you guys how to set up your LCD screen, uh, pair with the red remote, um, and what to expect when you first press the button when you, uh, when you, when you set your heaters up. So um, yeah, here we go. Okay, so I've just put the fuse into the, uh, into the power line and the LCD fires up straight away. Um, so what you've got there on the main screen at the moment is obviously a, pic, uh, a graphical representation of the heater, um, which all of this kind of moves around and dances and does stuff when the heater's in operation. And then the four digits there you've got is the time that the, as the heater thinks it is at the moment. And uh, because I've had the battery uh, disconnected, it loses the set time. So that's something to consider if you're if you're setting one of these up in a vehicle. Um, you need it to have a constant battery supply, otherwise it will lose all of your settings and time and things like that. So if you want to set the time correctly, first thing we do is hit the uh, settings button in the top right there, and it starts flashing as you can see. So in order to change that, all we've got to do is cycle through using the uh, arrow keys. So time at the moment is about seven o'clock, so we'll put one in there, press OK, move to the next digit, nine for seven, Okay, okay, set that to zero. Okay, so there we go. So that's gone through into the next part of the settings now, which is the timer to turn the unit on. So that's saying timer one uh, currently is set to off. So if we want to turn that on, all we've got to do is hit the left arrow until it says on, press OK. It's now asking us for the time um, that you want the heater to turn off. So, so if we want to turn that uh, timer back off again, all we've got to do is press the right arrow so it says off, press OK. And then again, this is the second timer. If you set it to on, it'll ask you for the time that you want the heater to turn on and off. And then, so the final menu that it goes through to is the password section. So this is a password protected area um, where you can input a four digit code, which will let you set up the fueling and the fan settings. So for most people you won't need to do this, but if you do, the password on these new heaters is 9009. And again, we're choosing the arrow keys to cycle through all of that. Um, but yeah, so as I say, for most people, you don't need to change any of these settings. Okay, so back to the clock screen. Okay, so first little tip for when you get your unit set up and you want to get it bled through, uh, there's a bleeding mode, which is built into the unit, which will only run the fuel pump um, to avoid um, running the, the heater without diesel. So all you need to do to access that is hold down the settings button and hit the right button, hold it until HOF appears, set it, to, set it to on using the left button and you can hear there the diesel pump will begin dosing. So we can press the settings button to stop that again. Okay, so now the bit that everybody's been asking me for is how do you pair the red remote with the blue LCD. Um, it's pretty easy. It's very easy in fact. All you gotta do, start off with your red remote, press the power and OK buttons simultaneously. The screen will come on, say connecting please wait. And it should say for pairing at the bottom of the screen just there. So wait until that comes on, let go. Then all you gotta do is hold down the right arrow on your LCD screen until HFA comes on. And then with any luck, your LCD will connect and it should say standby and it'll tell you all of the temperature and the controls. So it's just as easy as that. Um, if you've done it successfully, the uh, like a phone signal indicator should come up on the LCD screen just there. So um, if you haven't got that and you know you haven't paired it properly. So the four button red remote control has got a few more features than the older types. Um, you can, it'll tell you the ambient temperature where the unit is, press OK. It'll, then you can, you can set the temperature remotely. Um, but it also tells you the casing temperature, so that's actually the, case, the temperature of the unit itself. Uh, it'll also tell you your battery voltage remotely as well, which is, which is really quite useful. But yeah, so in order to change the temperature, all you've got to do is just use the remote arrows to go up and down. And you can see, as I do it, the temperature changes on the other screen as well. So. really quite good. So the simplest way to turn these units on is just to 
press the on button once, you can see the fan starts moving there. You get the little blue and red arrows indicating airflow in and out of the combustion chamber and also the red glow plug light as uh, illuminated inside the heater there as well. So I wanted to see what kind of temperature the outlet air gets to on these heaters um, and this has been running for a few minutes but um, you can see it climbs up to about 65 degrees um, which is quite a lot actually. So the other thing I was interested in and what a lot of people have been asking is what temperature the exhaust comes out. Um, this is actually a lot hotter than the heated air. Um, you can see as soon as I put the probe in there it jumps right up and eventually reaches nearly 300 degrees. So this kind of highlights you really don't want your exhaust next to anything flammable and you need to point it away from anything that could be damaged by this heat. So um, yeah, good to keep that in mind. And then finally I wanted to check the temperature of the casing itself during operation. So again, this is after a few minutes of running. Um, and I've seen a lot of people worried about the casing touching things in their vehicle. Um, but from what I've measured here, it's not really an issue. As you can see here, it only, only really gets up to around 26 to 27 degrees on the, um, the body of the shell. And then up towards the front where the hot air is coming out, you can get up to 40, maybe 50 degrees on the outside of that. So not really hot enough to do any damage. And uh, yeah, so it's only really the exhaust that you need to keep away from anything.